For me, I've always been very aware of not just the oils, but all of the things that kind of go in this wellness lifestyle or go along with it. Um, but what I love about what I get to do now is his help expose and educate people who otherwise would never have used any of this stuff. I mean, uh, these are people who, and, and uh, gosh, I don't want to sound like a, like judgmental, but they're just people who are not really, uh, you know, let's say shopping and buying organic food, or they're just maybe just going driving through, you know, uh, drive through and eating some fast food, fast food, and not thinking about what they're putting in their bodies. And now all of a sudden. You know, they're using, you know, maybe some lavender to help them sleep. And they're realizing like, oh, wow, like this is actually working. This smells great. I feel good. And it's opening these doors for people to now explore other other avenues of natural health and natural living. Things like, you know, just getting other chemicals out of their home. Um, and that's what I love. And I feel like it, it's almost like this gateway into healthier living starting it you know with the oils but then extending into other areas of your life and it's not that you have to go all out and get every chemical out of your home and get every medicine out of your you know medicine cabinet it doesn't have to be so black or white it can be you know baby steps and and I feel like there's just something that feels good for everybody and it's finding that balance and not making yourself you know too crazy <laughs> This is episode 28 of the Own Stream podcast, featuring Stacey Malkus. Welcome to the Own Stream podcast. I am Stephen Shelley. And I'm Teresa Scoba. And we've just hung up with uh, Stacey Malkus, who is somebody we know locally, though I guess we were introduced to her via somebody else, and we were really kind of asking about alternatives in and around um, raising an infant around health and wellness, and I can't even remember what it was because she's like, Stacy is an essential oils expert. So we talk a lot about that on the podcast, but that's how we met her. And um, so in the course of the podcast, uh, we're talking to her, and it occurred to both of us, like, this episode is not only about oils, their power, and their alter- and, and their the viability of them as an alternative to whatever um, medicinal remedy, whether that's pills or something over the counter might present itself. But it's really also about how network marketing is returning as a viable, powerful business option. So yes, Stacy is involved in a network marketing program. <clears throat> it's called Young Essentials, which is um, Young Living. Young essential Living. Oils. It's all about Young Living and its essential oils. But as it dawned on both of us through the course of this conversation, like that business model has been so scorned. There's so much bias against it. And we talk about this in depth. So this is nothing we're we're not talking out of school here. (laughs) But in order for that to thrive now, it's got to be a kick ass product. Otherwise, people are going to turn their back on it. And this is a kick ass product. And this, by the way, this podcast is not about selling you on these products. It's really about kind of opening your minds opening your mind to oils and other alternatives to to the mainstream kind of ways that we treat illness and pain. Um, So don't kind of brace yourself. This is not a big sales pitch, though. um, If you find yourself drawn to it, by all means, explore it. Um, We'll put links in the show notes. But it's really about, you know, what lies beyond the kind of mainstream paradigm of health and wellness and medicine and et cetera. Yeah, we were just talking after we hung up with Stacey about, you know, why network marketing um, "Quote unquote schemes," as they've schemes. been as they've been Pyramid labeled, schemes. have um, have gotten such a bad rap. And you think about the kind of traditional products that were, would be sold. You know, Tupperware is kind of the iconic one, or like maybe Avon Cosmetics, or like just really like kind of so-so or crappy products or like Cutco knives. You know, I, I went once for an interview at Cutco knives <laughs> oh, when I was did? like one of between one of my years in college or after high school. And I remember just walking out of there and be like, Oh my God, there's no way I could sell these I had knives. A relative years ago. <laughs> well, I won't say who, but they decided to sell perfumes and colognes. Right. And it was like, Oh, terrible like real I, I mean I was a teenager and I was like oh my god like, this is so bad but and so anyway and like you could hide a bad product behind a good salesperson back in the 1970s and 80s and even in the 90s but nowadays with the internet 
you can't do that anymore. This no, no network marketing program could thrive, I don't think, in this day and age where people would just quite clearly call you out for the bullshit that it is. So it's not only got to be a good product, it's got to be a great product. Yeah, and and we you know we've been exploring on on the podcast with a number of our guests even when we haven't intended to do it just how um you know, basically the story that we've been hearing is someone has an amazing experience in their life that's transformative. And basically they're trying to pass that on to others. And that's that's really what Stacy's doing. And that's what uh, Young Living seems how it seems to have grown to the, you know, from the mom and pop business Stacy wants to call it to the, you know, billion, multi-billion dollar business that it is now is basically one person sharing their success story with an essential oil or a series of essential oils to another. And that's that's really how Stacy got started started, you know, very reluctantly. And she talks quite humorously about um, getting and, you know, getting into network marketing through this company herself, but really how this has turned into a calling for her because she just sees people um, healing all kinds of things with essential oils and making such a difference in their lives. And she has a Facebook group that I've recently become a part of where really like I typed it and recently I've just typed in a few different things. You know, it's, she mentions diaper rash on the podcast. I actually typed that in recently and wow, all these stories. Stories came up of, you know, people using lavender and other oils that, um, you know, just had such achieved such wonderful success in a short amount of time. So it's it's, you know, really that power of sharing your experience and your story with someone else that that can be transformative both for you and for them. Yeah. And I guess the only other thing I'll add is um, how, you know, a network marketing program, it's location independent. You can do it on your own time. You can create your own world, your own team around it. It really sort of falls right in line with all the principles that we believe in about freedom and abundance and sharing and location independence, all these things that are interesting to us. And I I had no idea that would come out of this conversation. Um, I thought it would be really more about alternatives, which it clearly is about that. But um, so anyway, like two really great takeaways from this are the content that she shares about the essential oils, but also some of the nuances in the story around, you know, her team and how it functions and how it operates and how it's like absolutely not about selling. It's absolutely not about pushing. It's absolutely not about any of that. It's very, very different. And it just kind of opened that whole thing up to me which I'm still kind of surprised about. Yeah, and and she talks really beautifully about it. She basically began this work about four years ago, uh, almost by accident, and now has a, a grown a team of 40,000 people 40, <laughs> working for her, Great. and just through one person to another. And she talks about how, uh, you know, the freedom in, in these people's lives. It's not just the health success stories, of which there are very many, but also just how, you know, women that she knows are like, you know, financially independent, um, working a few hours each day, you know, having having control and flexibility over their own schedules, retiring their husbands, quote yeah. unquote, <laughs> term that I love, oh. you know, but basically just the freedom and control you can have over your own time um, through this business model. So that, that really was an awesome part of this conversation. Yeah, we're excited to share this with you. Uh, please stay tuned afterwards. We'll wrap up with a few notes, but um uh, thanks for joining us, and please enjoy this wonderful interview with Stacy Malkus. Welcome, Stacy, to the podcast. We're so thrilled to have you. Thank uh, you. Really, Likewise. really happy, and we've been bumping into each other all over Encinitas. So it's, <laughs> it's I feel like you're becoming more and more a part of my life, which is just always a good thing. So, <laughs> but. Um, you know, we um, we usually begin by talking about how we know the guest if we know them, and we so Stacy, um, I was introduced to last year by a mutual friend um, because I was looking for um, natural healing methods for our daughter, and you know, interested in seeking ways that I could address. Um, you know, health conditions and healing uh, with Sophia in natural ways. And Stacy is just a wealth of knowledge on this topic mm. um, and more. So, um, and I've heard a little bit about your story recently and, and it's just great to have you. So maybe we could Thank start, um, maybe we could start by talking a little bit about um, your 
how you were introduced to oils. I know that you say that, you know, you've you've always been interested in sort of quote unquote alternative healing techniques. Um, but I was curious, you know, you've been using essential oils to care for your family's health since I think 2013. Can you tell us about, you know, how you were handling your health and your family's health before that? And then what happened when you um, how you discovered essential oils and their healing powers? Yeah, sure. So I became a mom about five years ago. And until that point, I had always been interested in alternative natural things, but not the way that I was once I became pregnant. I became very hyper aware of everything that was going on and in my body. And I had always used, you know, herbs and, you know, homeopathy and all kinds of alternative things, but never found that I was getting really consistent, like really good results. Um, But I still continue to use them because they made me feel good. And I didn't like the idea of just putting, you know, over-the-counter medicines in my body. Um, About, oh gosh, uh, I don't know the exact timeline, but I would say about a year before I got pregnant, I was introduced to essential oils just kind of through the community and I didn't really know anyone using them. And I thought, I'm going to try to just order some of these online and see what happens. I didn't know anything about them. And I think I Googled like best essential oil and doTERRA came up and I just thought, okay, well, I'll try that. I mean, I did a little bit of research, but I just wanted to get started. And so I got this blend for immunity. It's called on guard and I started using it and I really liked it and I felt like it kept us healthy and that was it. I never branched off into other oils. I was, I think, a little intimidated. Mm -hmm. Um, Every time I went to the health food store, I'd, you know, see a big rack of, you know, a hundred different oils and I just thought, that's cool, but I have no idea what to do with them. (laughs) I thought thought it was just something that like hippie people used to smell like patchouli or something. And I I had had no idea about just how powerful they could be. And I was, I was intimidated. And so I never really got into it. And that's kind of the beginning. And so then fast forward when my daughter is about two, I had a really good friend. She was actually our hypnobirthing instructor. So like a natural uh, form of childbirth. And she's someone who I just trust. She's somebody who does a lot of research on products. She is just a great mom. And I find that the things that she does, I tend to just always agree with. And she started talking about this other brand of oils called Young Living and just going on and on about how they were helping her. And I'm someone who likes to do a lot of research. So I started looking into the company and everything I found was just, it was great. They're, you know, the best company in the world. They have all their own farms and everything's really pure and all this stuff. But then there was this part where they're like a network marketing company. And I was like, the brakes kind of went on and I was like, oh yeah, no, I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. That. <laughs> like, I don't want to be in one of those pyramid schemes or whatever. And so I kind of just let it go. But then she kept posting all these success stories she was having with her kids and with her husband and on herself. And and I was intrigued. And so I sent her a message and I said, you know, what's the story with these oils I'm using? You know, I told her what I had. And she basically let me know, here's the deal. Here's why they're so good. If you want to try them, you know, the best way is to get this starter kit. And it was $150 at the time. And I thought, I don't need 10 or actually it was 11 oils. I don't need 11 oils. I just want this one blend for immunity. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of priced it out. She's like, well, you can get this one blend and you can get a diffuser because I also needed a diffuser and it's going to cost, it was going to be like almost a hundred dollars or for, you know, 150, you get this whole kit. And I felt like, oh no, no, like I don't want to get sucked into this whole (laughs) thing. (laughs) I just want some oils. Um, but I went for it anyway. My husband was just like, well, look, if you're going to spend that much, you might as well just get this whole kit. And I told her very, very clearly, like, I do not want to do the business. I do not want to sell oils. She's like, that's totally okay. You can just get your kit. You never have to order anything. And that can be the end. And I was like, all right. So I ordered my kit and it came a few days later and I was afraid to open it because I just thought there's going to be 11 bottles and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I just kind of put it aside and 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 just didn't really, I don't know, I just never really got into it that quick. And then my daughter stopped napping for 
I think it was about a week and mm-hmm. she wasn't even two. So, you know, how old mm-hmm. is Sophia? She's a year and a half. About a year and a right? quarter, but <laughs> yeah, but okay. yeah. Really dependent on that. <laughs> yeah. So you depend on that time of the day and it's, you know, for me, that's my time to get you know anything done. And when she doesn't nap, she was just, you know, a crazy sleepless child. So that was a big deal that she just stopped napping. Mm-hmm. And so the girl who introduced me to the oils suggested, well, why don't you, you know, put some lavender on her feet. And I thought that sounded so strange again, because I hadn't really used oils very much, but I figured I have nothing to lose. Like she's not napping anyway. So if I put lavender on her feet and she still doesn't nap, well, then her feet just smell like lavender. It's not like, you know, I'm going to poison her or she's going to have side effects or all these other things that, you know, you're used to with other kind of remedies, you know, more mainstream, Western, whatever. So I did it and I didn't really expect much. And (laughs) sure enough, this kid took the longest nap of her life, like three hours and 45 minutes, which Ooh. normally she napped about two hours. And I was like, oh <laughs> my goodness. And I just kept looking at the baby monitor like, okay, like what did I do? Like, is my kid okay? Yeah. Um, and she was, she woke up very rested and she was happy and everything was great. But I'm a natural skeptic and I wasn't, I wasn't convinced. I was like, well, she was just so tired because she hasn't napped in so long. And so surely this oil didn't really make her do this. Um, but I continued to use them and they continue to work and not just for her sleep, but for everything. So, you know, the second thing I used it for with a great success was my husband who surfs all winter, gets these ear aches or ear infections. And I made up this little blend and, you know, showed him how to use it on his ear and it just, it kicked it out like overnight. Mm. And of course, he was still a skeptic and he's like, oh, no, it couldn't be the oils. And so we're just very skeptical people, even though we know, you know, about all about natural remedies. We just couldn't believe that they were working that quick and that good. Mm. Um, And so let's see, I kept using them and they just kept working. And now let's see, Brooklyn is almost six and still takes a nap, which is unheard of mostly for kids that age. And, And I swear it's just because I... I've got her little sleep blend and I, you know, use it consistently and we just, we love it. And so as far as the whole business side of this thing, which I don't know if, if, uh, do we want to talk about how this all works? We yeah, can, we yeah. will. I think we will. We'll, we'll pause there for the moment. We'll yeah. come back to that. Yeah. I'd like to kind of, uh, dive into, um, the skepticism and maybe let's pull that apart because, yeah. um, I would think that, um, so I imagine there are people who are sort of on board. They believe in natural remedies. They believe in oils. They believe in um, alternatives. But um, then there's the huge swath of people, I think the majority, who are probably raising an eyebrow being like, hey, how does this work? What is this? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I need a guy in a white coat, an old man with right. a, you know, a white coat <laughs> to give me something mm-hmm. that I can't possibly pronounce with 50 yeah. million things in it that I don't know about in order to feel better. Maybe talk through <clears throat> how you understand how these oils work and how alternative uh, remedies or methods um, are are perhaps in many cases even better than yes. what doctors would prescribe in a traditional mainstream setting. Okay. Well, first, I just want to start by saying I am in no way, you know, anti-medicine or anti, you know, Western medicine, I should say. I think there's absolutely a time and a place for that. Um, in fact, when my daughter was born, we really needed Western medicine and mm. she wouldn't be here if you know she wasn't in the NICU. And so I think I can really appreciate that uh, when it's appropriate. And so the thing with the oils is I love having just a first resort that I can turn to before I have to go down the path of, you know, maybe, uh, either over-the-counter stuff or pharmaceuticals or uh, other types of medicine. And so um, basically oils, Just I'll just break it down really simply if there's uh, just assuming people have no knowledge. So the oils come from different parts of plants. Some of them come from, you know, leaves or uh, petals or rinds in the case of things like citrus fruits. And they're just extracted out of the plant and the oils are basically the lifeblood of that plant. Mm. And so when we are able to take the oil out of the plant and use it in our bodies, uh, unlike maybe, a, a, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, Western medicine, I'll just say, uh, those are actually when people 
go into a lab and they make a Western medicine, they're actually basing that off of plants. Plants are really, if you look, you know, way back, you know, in time, hundreds of years, obviously that's all we had. We didn't have, you know, prescription drugs. And so the drugs that are on the market today are actually based off of plants. The difference being that you cannot patent a plant because each season and each harvest, the properties of that plant are very different. Mm. Versus when you, let's say, are going to make a batch of a uh, pharmaceutical drug or any medicine for that matter, it has to be very consistent and each property has to be the exact same from batch to batch. And with oils, depending on, uh, let's say, how much sunlight the plant got or how much uh, you know humidity or, or how much uh, rainfall or whatever the properties are in the soil, each harvest and each batch of that oil can be different. And that's a good thing, especially when you're using them in your body, because your body, as you know, sometimes when you take, you know, like a pharmaceutical drug, people say, oh, you become, what's the word, uh, not immune to it, but your body, uh, if you, you know, keep using it, it doesn't work quite as well. Yeah, you build that's up That's what's immunity. really, yeah. Like, yeah, like a tolerance. And so with the oils, what I love is that they're not always the same. Hmm. Um, and really by putting, you know, a plant on or in your body, I feel like our bodies know what to do with that. It's not such a foreign substance versus putting, like you, like you said, things that you can't even pronounce the name of and all these, you know, chemicals and all these things. Um, and of course with that comes very often a very long list of side effects, I always laugh when I watch, you know, like these commercials on TV and they say, oh, this is going to do this really great thing, but you may experience, and then they talk for like three minutes about like a hundred <laughs> yeah. other things that might happen. They're like, you're going to sleep great, but right. like, you know, your liver's going to be, you know, destroyed and you're going to have all, and I just, it makes me sad that that's, that's what we know. And that's as a society that, that we accept that we say, well, to feel good about this one thing, I'm going to have to suffer with all these other things. Um, what's, what I love about the oils is if they, you know, if, if it doesn't work, then, then it doesn't work. You don't have this list of side effects because your body knows how to process it and whatever it doesn't need, it just won't use. Um, so again, I, I feel like it's just a really nice, uh, like first resort and something to try. And very oftentimes it just works and you don't have to go down that other path. Um, but for example, in the case of my daughter, like I do, I have, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I have a bottle of, you know, kids Tylenol and it's in her medicine cabinet. Thankfully I've only had to use it once and she's five and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, it's just nice to have a natural alternative that I can turn to, um, that works and that I feel good about and that doesn't give us side effects. And I love being able to just share it with others like you guys and just the gratitude that I receive from people who've tried them is just overwhelming. And that's, that's why I love it. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One kind of quick, maybe this might be just me being uninformed, <laughs> but why are they called essential oils and, and what, what's the, what is that pointing to? Um, I, th I think that's just like the essence, it's the essence of the plant. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I believe where the word essential okay. comes from for the oil. It's basically the lifeblood of that plant. So yeah. when you extract it, that's the, the essence. You gave us a few really great examples from, you know, from your daughter, the napping and your, and your husband. I, I'm wondering if you could give us, and I know those were some of your first, what are some of the, you know, and you've worked with a lot of people at this point in the few years you've been doing this. Maybe you could mm -hmm. give us a few more examples of some of the, some of the common conditions that you've seen um, treatable with oil oh, and things, things people, maybe things people wouldn't expect or might commonly go to get a prescription for or get a more right. traditional, uh, um, uh, see a do doctor more traditionally for. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'll start by saying that there's several ways to use the oils. You can use them topically, which is on your skin. You can use them internally, which is ingesting them. And again, not all oils can be used internally, especially not all brands of oils, but even within the brand that I use, Young Living, uh, not all can be used internally, but many can. And then the third way is aromatically, which is inhaling them or breathing them in. And so you can use them for 
anything from, I'm going to think of like internal things that you would think like a stomach ache or a headache or um, some pain. Those are like physical ailments. And you can also use them for emotional ailments uh, like stress or anxiety or uh, sleeplessness. Uh, they are safe to be used on both kids and adults and also babies, but you do have to be sure to dilute them properly when you are using them on younger kids. Um, but we like to say there's an oil for that, and that basically means whatever ailment you have, there is an oil that can be used to address it. Um, and it sounds a little silly, but it's completely true, and I've seen it. We run a really large group on Facebook. Uh, it's called Hello Essentials, and we've got, uh, what do we have now? I think 30,000 people in the group, mm. and all day long there's just people talking about, you know, I use this peppermint on my temples, and oh my goodness, my headache is gone, or, you know, I have this stomach ache, and I use this uh, ginger oil, or whatever, like all day long. So I just get to see these thousands of uses for these oils, and it's literally endless, Um and so that's what I love about what I do now is I get to really get to know people, find out what their ailments are, and just help suggest things that can help help them feel better. And let's talk a little bit uh, like ab about the range of things because even as I'm <clears throat> listening to you, I'm like, well, okay, headaches and sleeplessness. <laughs> but like, like talk about maybe some of the things outside of that small kind of um, – I guess I guess I guess as a as a Western <laughs> consumer, one thing I've learned to do, and I've been trained to do this, is to put things in the kind of over the counter category and the mm -hmm. prescription category, which is like more serious. Where does where do essential oils kind of <clears throat> go when it when it comes into the prescription area? Um, are there examples or, or or things you've heard about specifically where? You know, these oils in some sort of combination were tried and, and led to a healthy outcome. Yeah, so absolutely. So before I start, let me just say like it's a big blanket statement. Now that oils are becoming really, really big, the essential oil industry is it as of last year, it was about a two billion dollar industry and it's scheduled wow. to go up to 10 billion just within the next, I believe, four four or five years. So it is just exploding right now. And because of that, and this part makes me really sad, the FDA is having to really uh, crack down and get involved with what people can say, because technically these, uh, these oils are not a drug. They're not classified as a drug and they haven't gone through the type of you know testing that a pharmaceutical drug would go mm -hmm. through. Because that takes, as you know, like 10 years to get a drug license. It has to go through many trials and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, and again, because the plants are different, each batch, you could never classify them like that. But the point being is that the FDA and, and other bigger bodies are starting to see like, wow, these things are really working. People are starting to use them instead of, you know, drugs. Mm -hmm. This is not good because I don't want to get off too far off topic here, but, you know, the pharmaceutical industry is, is a massive industry, if not one of the biggest in our world. Mm -hmm. um, and so when anything comes comes up that might threaten that or, you know, might take away those sales, which is exactly what's going on with these oils, that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so as far as using oils uh, in addition or instead of pharmaceutical drugs, it's, it's a really hot topic and we have to be careful, you know, how we speak about that. Um, even though I have seen with my own eyes and I've seen, you know, in our Facebook group and I've seen friends, uh, you know, use oils and, you know, get off of pharmaceutical drugs or use them instead of these types of things. We can't really promote that, mm -hmm. uh, because again, they are not drugs. So with that said, there are hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, you know, research studies that have been published in science journals and for all of those skeptics or the guys in the white coats who want the hard evidence. And I've compiled actually a list of 85 of those studies, but there's many, many, many more. If you go to PubMed online, uh, like P-U-B, sorry, P-U-B-M-E-D, which is where all the science journals are published, you can even just do searches, you know, for frankincense oil or for even just essential oils in general. 
And you can start to see just hundreds of studies that have been done. So for me, a lot of times I do run into people who are very skeptical. And and I get it because I was too. And my husband was probably 10 times more skeptical than I was. And now he loves oils. Um, But for those people who are like, yeah, I don't know. Like really, this little bottle of plant whatever, it's really, I don't know. Uh, I like to direct them to some of these studies because you really can see you know, with just no bias, like exactly what they're doing. Um, And if you'd like, I can send you guys a link afterwards if you want to check that out. Great. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll put it on the, uh, we'll put that in the show notes. Okay, cool. So we definitely wanted to to get into a little bit of of what essential oils are and your experience with them. We definitely want to follow your experience um, in this conversation. So maybe let's step back a minute and just talk a bit. Can you tell us, you know, you said, um, I think that, you know, you've been interested for a long time in um, natural remedies. Um, Have you always been somebody who was rather independent or seen things from a unique point of view, Um, you know, growing up, uh, going to school, any of that? Or was there some kind of turning point where you, you started to do things a little differently or started to question what was presented as mainstream? Yeah, great. I love that question. Um, So I feel like growing up, I was always aware of, you know, health and wellness. My mom passed away from breast cancer when I was young. I was five. And so I think I always grew up being just more aware of everything that's going in my body, trying to eat healthy and just be healthy in general. But it was never something that I really focused on the way I do now. And as far as the turning point, it was absolutely when I got pregnant. Mm-hmm. I I, I kind of went off the deep end, went a little crazy. Um, as far as just trying to get my hands on as much knowledge and as much research as I could, as far as, you know, reading every label and understanding every ingredient and uh I'm like a green personality, which if you know what that is, it's like someone who wants all the information. So I definitely did a lot of research. This is even before I got into the oils, just on uh, everything, all kinds of, you know, foods and how they're grown and, you know, where products are coming from and, you know, things like GMOs and uh, all of this stuff. So I I would definitely say uh, when I got pregnant, and then, of course, after having my daughter, I, I dove much more into this realm of, you know, health and wellness. But I think I've been, you know, aware of it and exposed to it my whole life, I would say. Mm-hmm. Stephen just gave me like a hard, direct look when you said that. Because, <laughs> I mean, You're I've my been, people, girl. <laughs> I've been interested for a while as well, and, and especially around cancer in my family as well. My father's death um, in terms of plants and yeah. Um, you know, we've been plant-based in terms of our eating for a long time. So it's interesting to me that, you know, we, I'm just now kind of stepping into the realm of, of oils myself, um, and plant-based yeah. healing, but, um, but yeah, identify with that statement. I think Steven's had some of that experience too, just, you know, bringing a, a new life into the world really makes you look at your own choices and ways that you can best protect and cultivate that life. And we've certainly had that experience yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel, I feel really what's the word just glad that people are are becoming aware and waking up to this even when I started with the oils which was just about four years ago I feel like I got so many more strange looks when I would talk about oils and (laughs) just a short four years later now I talk about oils and everyone has either heard of them or is using them or in some way I feel like has been exposed to them Um, I mean there's plenty of people who still don't know what they are but I feel like just in four years like the oils have definitely become a much bigger topic and and something that just more people are using which makes me happy and not just oils but I think just uh just health in general people are becoming more aware of what they're putting in their bodies and not trusting you know labels or doctors or all of these things so I think it's a good thing. Sorry, not to say doctors are bad. I think there's plenty of great doctors. I hope that doesn't sound like Definitely. No, <laughs> like we, I'm crazy. <laughs> we we're totally on the same page as you. You know, doctors aren't bad. I think systematically medicine is challenged, but within that there yeah. are some people who are wonderful doing amazing things and we've Absolutely. met with a lot of them. And we'll and we have appointments on our calendars mm-hmm. with some pretty interesting people, not only for the podcast but personally. So um, this definitely is not an attack on medicine, but it is exciting to kind of open up another uh, possibility or another uh, another way of healing for people because um, 
uh, I think a lot of people are hungry for mm-hmm. alternatives that are that are not that are a little more transparent. It just you know the the notion of lavender peppermint. You've just indicated those two so far. It just sort of feels better than an over the counter drug. It just just yes. by just the the reality of one or the other just feels better even saying it. So I think yeah. people are hungry for that. Yeah. And, I, and I, can, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Stacey. I was going to say, and you can pronounce them. They're words you can <laughs> say. <laughs> Lemon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just think also on that note, it's a great way to raise kids. Like my daughter, who's five and a half, literally doesn't know what something like Pepto-Bismol is. But if she has a stomach ache, she will ask for Digize, which is a blend of, you know, uh, oil to support, Sweet. you know, digestive health. And so I just think it's so great to be able to, you know, raise kids now who this is what they know. And a lot of my friends were all kind of in the same network and we all, you know, love these oils and all of our kids just have their little roller bottles. And I just think it's fantastic. And I think it's just a shift in the right direction. Well, you know, I I have found, and I'm curious how this has possibly worked for you, that when you begin to kind of pull back the layers in one little one area of life, in this case, it would be healing, health, medicine, mm-hmm. oils, that kind of world. When you begin to uh, to look behind the the kind of presented formulaic way we do things and begin to explore alternatives, sometimes that kind of thinking or way of looking at things, suddenly other areas begin to shift or open yeah. or change. I'm curious if you had that experience and, and specifically maybe – other things that have been impacted by this kind of line of inquiry or kind of digging, digging to find the truth. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I would say um, for me, I've always been very aware of not just the oils, but all of the things that kind of go in this wellness lifestyle mm-hmm. or go along with it. Um, but what I love about what I get to do now is his help expose and educate people who otherwise would never have used any of this stuff. I mean, uh, these are people who, and, and uh, gosh, I don't want to sound like a, like judgmental, but they're just people who are not really, uh, you know, let's say shopping and buying organic food, or they're just maybe just going driving through, you know, uh, drive through and eating some fast food, fast food, and not thinking about what they're putting in their bodies. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're using, you know, maybe some lavender to help them sleep, and they're realizing like, oh wow, like this is actually working. This smells great. I feel good. And it's opening these doors for people to now explore other, other avenues of natural health and natural living things like, you know, just getting other chemicals out of their home. Um, and that's what I love. And I feel like it, it's almost like this gateway into healthier living, starting it, you know, with the oils, but then extending into other areas of your life. And it's not that you have to go all out and get every chemical out of your home and get every medicine out of your, you know, medicine cabinet. It doesn't have to be so black or white. It can be, you know, baby steps. And, and I feel like there's just something that feels good for everybody. And it's finding that balance and not making yourself, you know, too crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, since you've talked about, you're talking about your work with others, let's talk about that. Um, uh, so tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what were you doing before you discovered the oils in terms of your career? And, you know, okay. we recently sat down and had a wonderful conversation about this. And you described this work um, to me, I think, as as a calling. You know, it certainly is something that seems to have come to you through your own experience. Can you talk a little bit about um, your excitement and how you you ended up getting into the business side of this yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so let's see. I... <laughs> We'll go way back. I went to engineering school. I was a big nerd and, you know, loved things like physics and calculus and all of these things Um, and never really knew what I was going to do with that. And I, you know, had some jobs in that in that world. And I felt like I just wasn't really making a difference in anything. Like I would work on designing like a very small part of something much bigger. And the people that I worked with for the most part were guys who are, you know, twice my age and like no personality. And I just felt like this wasn't, this wasn't me. And I, (laughs) um, I just, I think in our graduating class, there was, I think six girls and like 80 something guys. And I don't know, it just, it never felt like me, even though I loved the subject material and I loved, uh, designing things. Um, and so then after that, through a 
kind of a random course of events, I ended up starting my own uh, web design company where I just uh, got to, you know, help clients make websites and things like logos and business cards. And I loved it. I got to work on my own, just doing freelance work wherever, you know, my laptop and I would go. That's where my job would take me. And and it was great. I had freedom. I didn't make a whole lot of money, but I made enough that, you know, we were okay. My husband had a good job and everything was everything was good. I was not looking for anything else. Um, <laughs> when this oil thing fell in my lap and the girl who got me into it suggested that you know, after my daughter had this amazing nap with the lavender that I should share that story, I immediately was like, oh no, like I do not want to sell oils to my friends. That's really sleazy. <laughs> like that's really scammy. Like that's really weird. All those things I thought like, yeah, that's definitely not me. I'm not a salesperson. Um, and so she then explained to me, you know, you have so many friends who are moms and they all have these kids who aren't sleeping. Think how many people you could help. Mm. And as soon as she said those words, like, think how many people you could help, my brain just shifted. And I was like, oh, I need to tell everyone about these oils. I need to help everybody. And it wasn't because I wanted to like build a business and make money and do any of that. It was because I saw how much these oils were doing to help us. And I just wanted to help others. Um, in my previous graphic design company, I was able to help people. You know, I'd make them a business card and it would help them, you know, get their word out about their business, that kind of thing. But it was never what I felt was really like meaningful, impactful kind of help. Um, getting to now share about these oils and grow this team. I have a large team of about 40,000 people now. And it's... I, there's like no words how incredible it is. I basically get to help people live healthier by using these products that they then love and they share with others. And again, when I heard about this business model at first, I just thought all those bad things. But then I realized, you know what? When I go into Whole Foods or whatever and I see these oils on the shelf, nobody's explaining them to me. Nobody's going to come home with me and give me, you know, a reference book on how to use them. And no one's going to, you know, come help me make blends and come help me do any of this. I'm on my own, which is probably why I never got into it before. And so when Young Living started the company, they wanted this product to be sold person to person. And they wanted the story of their company to be told. And so the story is basically, you know, that they are the only company in the world who's doing every step of production under one company, starting with, you know, taking the seed, growing the seeds, non-GMO, planting the seeds, you know, harvesting the crops, distilling the oils, bottling the oils. And so they wanted that to get told person to person. And so as soon as I started to understand this business model and see it for what it is, I completely fell in love with it. And all of my ideas about, you know, just being this like scammy, like salesperson, like, hey, come to my party and buy some oils. Cause that's mm -hmm. what I had done. I'd been at parties that my friends had for these network marketing companies where you feel like you have to buy like the least expensive thing just to <laughs> kind of make your friend like feel okay. And like, and then I realized like, this is not like that at all. This is, you know, we are, our team is kind of founded on this. We call the unsales approach, which is basically that we just share, we just share our stories and the product it's so good it literally sells itself. Like mm. the best people on our team are people who came into it saying, I'm not a salesperson. Mm. Those are the best people because we don't want people who are just, you know, trying to sell a product. It's not about that. It's about people who've had genuine success and just love the product. And so I feel now like I have the best job in the world that I get to just share this amazing product, which is just this gift from the earth. And I get to see every day I get, you know, emails and texts pretty much all day long about people thanking me, you know, this totally worked. Thank you. In fact, just before our call, I got one from a girlfriend who her son, I don't know if this is TMI, but had this really horrible diaper rash. And, you know, I made her this little sample and she put it on for two days and it's gone. And she's just like, so thrilled. And so those are the messages and those are the, you know, sentiments that keep me going. Um, and I, I just love it. I feel like I can really make a difference with people and help them live healthier. Well, network marketing over the years has gotten such a, a, a bad rap um, mm -hmm. and, and mainly due to the the content and the pushiness of, you know, what they're selling and how they go about it. So what I guess the point is, 
is that in order to be great at it, as it sounds like this company is and that you are, it would have to be a great product to yes. to go into such <laughs> a heavily biased business model, a biased against it by mm-hmm. nature. Like everybody listening probably has heard that multi-level marketing or network marketing and has some maybe sour taste in their mouth like you did. Yep. But it sounds like the product is so good that it actually is made for this kind of structure. Why don't you talk about the structure for people who aren't familiar with it and maybe even some specifics about how your team may work? Teresa's leaning Sure, in and how you've got 40,000 yeah, 40, people 000. in yeah. a few years. Like, it's just an in interesting point to make. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild, especially because I started this saying, I just want to buy this kit. I do not want to sell this to anybody. Like I was so rude looking back. I was like, seriously, don't even talk to me about selling this stuff. Like I'm not interested. I was like so rude and it's a good friend of mine. And so we look back and we laugh now that I was like so adamant that I was not going to do this. Um, And the irony now is I would say 90% of my team, if not more, starts the same way. We all start saying, I just want to buy the oils and I don't want to share. I don't want to sell. I don't want to do the business. And I think I had to walk through that experience of feeling the same thing to be able to relate to people. And I just say, that's totally fine. These products are so great. Just order them, use them and love them. And you never have to share or sell or any of that. Um, (laughs) It's just funny because I I see it over and over and they, they really work so well that people can't like not share about them. It's like, you know, if I always go back to the example of if a great restaurant opened up down the street, like you would just tell all of your friends in the neighborhood because you want them to enjoy it. It kind of works like that. When you have something that just works, we're like hardwired to want to tell people about it. And so I just think it's a brilliant setup for this particular uh, company and these products. And our team in particular has set it up in such a way that we can share without selling. And we do. We just tell our stories. We share testimonials. And we never say things like, you know, contact me if you want to buy some or let me know if you'd like a sample. Like we leave all that garbage out because it's just, it's salesy and it pushes people away. And the products are just so amazing that we don't, we don't need to do it. Um, And so as far as how, to answer your question, how it works, the way that network marketing works is it's uh, it's direct sales, which is basically selling uh, person to person. So it's a relationship business. So the girl who, you know, I took that birthing class from, she started talking about the oils and then I, you know, messaged her and I said, hey, how do I get some? And she said, here's how you get it. So I signed up under her. And so I'm part of her downline. And so anytime that I order, she earns a commission off of me. Mm-hmm. And then anytime that I, you know, sign someone up, you know, I earn commission off of them and so on. And so the way that, that, you know, uh, the way that I kind of mirror that is if you look at any, any big company or just any, yeah, any company really, um, the setup is such that, you know, you have your like executive team or your CEO or your people at the top and they're always going to earn the most amount of money. You know, then you've got, you know, maybe your like sales reps or, you know, your depending on the industry, whatever it is, your people below, and they're always going to earn less. And then you maybe have like thinking of maybe like a grocery store, then maybe you have like your baggers, the people who bag the groceries, those kind of things. And again, they're always going to earn less. And so it is still shaped kind of like this pyramid. Um, But the difference with network marketing is that there's no limit. Like I can absolutely earn more than the person who got me into it. And likewise, the people below me can, you know, outrank or out earn me. Um, And as far as the distribution of, you know, the, the, the income or the commissions, we are basically all of the departments of a regular company. So again, I'll just use the grocery store example. Uh, let's say you're a Whole Foods store. You're going to have to put a lot of money into you know, marketing and advertising, millions and millions of dollars into marketing and advertising. Uh, we in network marketing, the distributors are basically the marketing and advertising company. Mm-hmm. So Young Living, they don't do marketing and advertising. We do it. So it's really just another another way to sell a product. And in the case of essential oils, I really feel like it's the only way to sell essential oils because again, when they're just on the shelf in a store, it's so hard to know what to do with them. And it's, you just don't get the whole picture and the whole story and you don't get the support that we do. So when someone signs up with me, 
you know, right away, I usually try and do a phone call or we meet in person if they're local and I'll go through the kit and I'll give them like a beautiful book that I've designed. Cause again, I used to be a graphic designer. So now I, you know, designed a bunch of graphics for our team and, you know, you get added to this Facebook group where people just welcome you and share stories and answer questions. And so you get this whole community, which is a, what I think the best part about this business is mm-hmm. just this built in community of people who are all, using these oils and just trying to live healthier and finding, you know, alternatives. And so I just think it's amazing. (laughs) Well, you know what? I've heard of other network marketing programs that have a similar model in that they're not at all hard sell. It's very much look at this, look how great this is. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of sells itself. Do you think that this form is making quote unquote a comeback or it seems to it's may, maybe maybe due to technology and our and our ability to just simply share more openly with each other more immediately it might seem to fit that better than say you know a brick and mortar setting up a shop yeah. and putting all this money into building up some store um, is that since yes. you've gotten to yes a- absolutely like a thousand percent i believe that network marketing is truly the business model for the next century. I believe that people, I've got a lot of people on my team now who came from, you know, the background of trying to start their own company and they put, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into the types of things you're talking about, maybe setting up a brick and mortar, buying inventory, you know, hiring employees, all these things are so much cost, Mm -hmm. um, only to then have it basically fall apart and, you know, or just not be profitable or take so many years to be profitable. Whereas in this type of company, you pay $160, you get this kit and now you have a business. Now you have a company and you don't have to do any of the things like inventory. You don't have, you know, the company does all of that. Um, and I just believe it can give people the freedom and the, you know, both time freedom and financial freedom that we all want. Uh, but it's it's just so hard with more of a quote unquote you know regular company or regular job. Uh, many many people on my team, hundreds if not thousands, now are able to either work part time, so scale back from their jobs that they had, or even completely you know retire or quit from that job. And then even the next level above that is there's now people who are able to retire their spouse, like you know, their business is doing so good that now they're able to bring their spouse home and they can both be home, which I think is just beautiful, especially if you have kids and you can all just be home. And I mean, right now, you know, my husband was able to just take my daughter to camp at, you know, whatever time it was in the middle of the day. And I get to just go pick her up and we both have just complete freedom of our time. And to me, there's nothing more valuable than that. It sounds like he's got more time to surf and get in her ear he does. problems. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does, he although he helps, me, <laughs> he helps me with my business a ton. He's more nice. of like a really big picture guy, like strategic thinker, and I'm much more of a detail doer. And so together, I feel like we're a really good team awesome. for this business. Awesome. I love that flexibility. Um, tell us briefly about, you, you mentioned to me the other day you had just come back from traveling to somewhere wonderful to visit the farm. <laughs> tell us tell us just a little bit a little bit about what your yeah. life is like uh, working for this company and like, sure what you've yeah seen. Uh, so let's see I got back most recently from two different trips uh, one was just in Utah where we have a lavender farm and then the other was in Australia where we have a cypress farm and the coolest part about this company is you know when they send you on trips, you just get to go and experience these beautiful farms. And so we got to basically see how this cypress oil is distilled, which that in itself, I mean, I could talk for like hours about that, but I'll just give you a really brief summary. It's incredible to me when you take this cypress oil and it's called blue cypress, it actually comes out and it's bright blue. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, You take these cypress trees and you distill them and then there's a very magic window of how long and exactly at what temperature and what pressure you distill them at and if you nail it right where it needs to be and I, I think it's like 26 hours you get this beautiful blue oil with all of the constituents and all of the therapeutic properties that you need 
if you distill it for anything less, like 25 hours or, you know, 27 or 30 or two or anything less, you basically get nothing. Like you get a very, very little amount of those therapeutic properties, um, which is why it's so important when you're buying oils, because there's very little regulation in this industry to know what you are getting. Um, And even just reading labels on the bottles, again, like going to the health food store, they can say things, you know, 100% pure, organic, wild crafted, artisan grown, all this stuff. But unfortunately, it really means nothing unless you know exactly how it was distilled and you know that farm that it came from. And last year, I was at a farm in Hawaii. We have a sandalwood farm, beautiful farm. And Something I loved at the farm there is you walk around and they instruct you that you need to only speak positive words. You cannot use any foul language, any swear words, because the plants will feel it. The plants, everything, you know, frequent, everything's frequency, right? Everything, mm-hmm. there's a frequency to everything and there's a vibration to everything. And by even just speaking negative words, the plants can pick up on that. Um, so this company, the level that they care about things that you would never even imagine that any you know, farm is caring about, uh, Young Living does. And so I just, I have so much respect for what they're doing and how they're growing these plants and distilling the oils. And it's been amazing getting to travel, you know, all over and experience, uh, it's what we call seed to seal, which is basically the promise of how these oils are produced. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it is awesome. It's it's incredible. And I always tell people you don't have to be like me, you know, with this huge team to even experience this. Anyone, whether you're signed up with Young Living or not, can go to any of the farms on any day. You literally can just show up and say, I want a tour. And it's just the most transparent company. They will take you on a tour. They'll walk you through the distillery and through the farms and the fields. And you can go like ride on the tractors. And it's just it's just the coolest I want to say mom and pop company because it feels mom and pop, but now it's a billion dollar company, but it still really does have that mom and pop like family feel. And it really is. It's, it's just incredible. Well, your passion for this um, really comes through uh, in talking to you. And I, I wanted to just dig in a little more to that notion of help that you were talking about. You know, I think a lot of people in their careers want to help others or, you know, be of service to the world. And you said, you know, when you, when you were doing, um, your design work that you were helping people, but you kind of discovered a different notion of helping here. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk a little bit about that, about, you know, being called to this work and what it, what this feels like being serviced to the world in this way? Yeah. I mean, (laughs) when I started this and I guess I still am, I'm a total introvert. I never thought of myself as like a leader or someone to get up and, you know, quote unquote, change the world. I thought like, I'll just sit here in the corner and like make pretty graphics or I'll just sit here and, you know, use some essential oils and maybe tell a few friends. But then I realized it's so much bigger by telling a few friends that then tell a few friends that then tell a few friends and that I can then kind of be at the top and helping to support all of these people. It's just, it's so much bigger than that. And getting now to build this team. And when I say team, it's mostly an online community that we run. It's, it's like a Facebook group that we, you know, do all of our communication in, um, and just getting to read these stories from people, whether it's oils or business, meaning, you know, oils, like they used an oil and it completely worked and they're feeling great or business, meaning, you know, they've been able to, you know, grow their team to a size that now, you know, maybe they can quit their job or maybe they can, you know, retire their husband, or maybe they can afford that vacation that they've never been able to take. Um, all of these things, both oil and business just give me this overwhelming sense of gratitude. And I, I almost cry every time that I go to these events and I see my team and I see just what an impact these products have made on people. It's, I get very emotional every time because I always go back to like, well, what if I didn't like, what if I didn't get that kit? Cause I was, you know, Ooh, network marketing, or what if I didn't, you know, start sharing about it? Cause Ooh, what are people going to think of me? Like I'm trying to push products on people. Cause that's not who I am. And people who know me, they knew that they knew that I wasn't just trying to like make a quick buck. Like we had, you know, we had enough money. Like we were fine. We weren't looking to like do some, you know, whatever people think get rich quick scheme. We were like, I was good. It wasn't about like how much money can I make for my friends? It was truly only about, I want to help my friends. And, you know, little things like going to the park with my daughter and watching like a mom, like rub sunscreen on her baby, knowing like what was in that bottle and how toxic it was. Mm -hmm. Like 
I'm I'm that crazy mom that like I just want to like go over and be like, can I help like educate you about what's in here? But I don't actually do that because that's really weird and creepy <laughs> if, if you do that. But now I feel like I have this platform that's much more acceptable where mm-hmm. I can share this this message with people in a way that that they're able to receive it and not feel like I'm maybe being like a judgmental stalker. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh-huh. you you introduced something there that oh, I and by the way, we probably should start to wrap up. Which OK, means sure, sure. I know you've got about about 10 more minutes, so we don't yes. want to keep you long. But we have we have a kind of a nice coda we do with every guest where we ask three quick questions. But before we do that, maybe we can just talk a bit about <clears throat> kind of you and the the um, conviction, I guess, or where the strength comes from to commit to this, to, to kind of be outside of the mainstream in this way, to be vocal about it, to, to, and to be in such integrity and in such congruency with this. Um, it, it's, it's a different makeup, I think, from quote unquote, you know, m- most people in that you have to you have to see beyond the certain programming and to be willing to talk about it and share about it and be open about it. And a lot of people, as you kind of just alluded to, there is, um, you know, the the ability to kind of talk about that and and maybe not necessarily not care what other people think, but to mm-hmm. put that aside and still be vocal and talk about it takes some. Something internal, some strength, some some maybe yeah. some spiritual beliefs guidance. or guidance. I don't know. Talk about that. What it is that gets you to past that resistance and open and sharing as you have. Yeah. No, no, that's good. I think as far as the resistance goes, there's always going to be resistance with anything, oils or otherwise. And, you know – even though I think oils are for everybody, and they are because you don't have to be any type of person to use them. Um, there's some people who are just, it's just not their thing. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, but for everyone else, I just, I see firsthand every day what these are doing to help people. And then as, you know, new people are coming into my team and they're seeing how well they're working and how much they're helping people, I feel like regardless of who you are or maybe what your hangups are, or your personality or all these things, I think everybody wants to share a good thing. Like back to the restaurant example, if there's a great restaurant, like who wouldn't not tell someone about it? You know, especially if they're asking like, hey, do you know of any good restaurants around here? <laughs> or like, hey, I've had this, you know, pounding headache. Like, do you have anything? Like who wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, try this peppermint oil. Who would be like – Nope. I don't know. I can't help you. Like Mm. if you know you have something that can help. And so I guess the question then comes down to like, well, how vocal do you want to be about it? Like, do you want to get up and give presentations about it? Or do you want to just kind of quietly use it? Um, I'm, I think, like I said, more of an introverted person. And so the way that I've shared about it is really just one-on-one with my friends. I'm not like traveling around the country, like speaking to big groups of people about this, although there are people who do that. Um, for me, it's just been more, more about just connecting with friends, like in the ways that I always do. So like if we're going, you know, to a, I don't know, to a play date at the park or to a barbecue, you know, with another family. Um, and then as people are talking about ailments, which everybody does, uh, in fact, we were just out the other night and we were out with this other couple and the guy was complaining that he had this really bad back pain. And so when someone complains about something and you have something that can help, regardless of who you are, your personality, I think that you just help. You just do. So you say, oh, I have this product, this oil. I have this blend. Here, I have some on me. Do you want to try it? Like, here, roll this on. Um, I just think that's just how it works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that answered it, but that's how it's worked for me. And it's it's always felt genuine and it's never felt like I'm – uh, doing something so uncomfortable. And I always tell people on my team, like if something doesn't feel good and genuine, then don't do it. Like I have people, you know, that are like, I don't want to have like a big party at my house and have people over and share oils. And I say, well, then don't do that. Like only do what feels good and right and true to who you are. Because as soon as you start trying to, you know, be something else, then, then people are going to feel that and they're going to like push back. Um, so I feel like a lot of this business side is just being true to yourself and just doing what you do. And people will feel that that passion and that uh, genuine 
genuineness. Is that a word? Gen- what is the word for genuine? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a word. <laughs> uh, genuineness. I just made that up. Um, so yeah, it's just, it feels good. Yeah. I think that's, that's awesome. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, following what feels good on the podcast being a guidance. So that's, it's fantastic. So we'll, we'll wrap it up. I know we need to, um, we have three quick questions we ask at okay. the end, um, of our podcast. The first is what book or books up to three would you recommend that every human being should read? Ooh. Okay. So I don't know about every human, um, there's a book for me that has just changed my world in this business, and it's called GoPro. And I guess I think every human should read this. And the reason for that is because it basically describes this business model, network marketing, which, again, like I had a huge wall up about. And it explains how this really is the best business model to gain control of your freedom, time, money, every kind of freedom. And, um, it talks about just finding a product that you love. It doesn't have to be oils and, Mm -hmm. and finding the company that you can stand behind and then using that as a platform to build your own business. And once you're able to do this, there is like no feeling like the feeling of just complete freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want. It's amazing. Um, so for me, that book, that book completely made me see that and I share it with everyone on my team. Mm. Okay. Second question. Um, what is the best meal you've ever had and why? Ooh, okay. This one's going to be really weird, but, (laughs) um, my grandma who actually was, if she was alive right now, she would just have the biggest smile on her face because she was somebody who was way into alternative and natural wellness before anybody even knew what it was. She used to do yoga like on her front yard and people thought she was a witch. This is like in the fifties. Oh, so cool. Uh, cool. So cool. And this is the weird and funny part, but she would make this oatmeal and I think she just would cook it too long and it had these like lumps in it. And I would like (laughs) beg her to make like this lumpy oatmeal (laughs) and we would sit together. We would sit and we would like eat this lumpy oatmeal and she would just talk about crazy cool things like how she puts magnets on her water to, you know, just do all, I don't know. I don't even remember all the details, but just really incredible stuff for health and how, you know, she's never had a cavity and all these things and how she doesn't eat sugar. And she was just, so many years ahead of herself and I don't know why that's probably like the weirdest answer to the best meal but there's something about that memory of lumpy oatmeal with my grandma (laughs) super cool it opens up a whole point of discovery about her that's wonderful yeah I wish I wish she could see this whole oil thing she would just (laughs) she probably used oils I just didn't know it (laughs) cool that's cool Um, third question what have you learned in the last 30 days that you think everyone should know Um, I would say in the last 30 days to really just be present and to, I know it sounds so cliche as far as just enjoy every day, but I, I recently lost a really dear friend and, you know, I lost my mom when I was young and just seeing that loss makes you realize just how precious life is. And I know this is all kind of cliche stuff, but I think it hit me just recently because I I took a trip for a week where I was away from my daughter for the longest I've been away from her. And uh, just being able to be present in each each day and really uh, Mm. just being present. Yeah, that's good. It sounds so like simple and so kind of like big picture, but I try and, you know, even in my business, like, my phone all day is just ding, 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 ding. And, you know, messages and texts. And like when I'm with my daughter or when we sit down for dinner, I literally put it into airplane mode. Um, or even like right now on this call, just to kind of block out all of that noise. There's so much noise in our, in our world right now. And so if we can just quiet that and be present in the moments that we are, that we are in, um, and just see them for what they are, I think that's, that's huge. That's beautiful. Well, before we let you go, where should people connect with you online and what would you like people to know about what's possibly coming up for you, et cetera? 
Sure. Uh, let's see. So I am online uh, at Hello Essentials, which is H E L L O hyphen Essentials with an S E S S E N T I A L S. That's my team. If you want to read about me, you can do a forward slash and then S and then Malkus, S M A L K U S. That's Stacy Malkus. That's me. Um, and as far as things that are coming up, uh, we, not we, but Young Living just released an incredible line of makeup that is very clean. In fact, I keep trying to find something wrong with it because that's just what I do when I look at ingredients and I cannot find anything toxic or dangerous or icky uh, in this stuff. And I'm not a big makeup person at all. Like I'm not a girly girl. I mean, I just told you I went to engineering school, <laughs> um, but you know, when I do need to step it up and look professional and look good, I do like to be able to put on some makeup and and feel good about wearing it and not feel like I'm, you know, poisoning my myself from the inside out. Um, and so I'm really excited about this new line of makeup. God, that sounds funny because if someone, <laughs> someone can do me, like heard me talk about makeup. Uh, but I just, I think there's so much toxic makeup and skincare and cosmetics out on the market. And there's just, there's no regulation whatsoever. The last time a law was passed was in 1938, a federal law in the cosmetics industry. And it just makes me crazy to think about just how little people know about what they're putting on, you know, every single day and not just like one thing, but, you know, dozens of products all day long. So that's what I'm really excited about makeup, which is, again, I'm just laughing when I say that, but it really is <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. And, and so, yeah, I'm excited to share it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stacey. It's been great talking to you. Yes, this has been so much fun, and I'm sure I'm going to connect with you guys. I feel like I've run into each of you independently or together around town, so hopefully we'll connect soon. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week's Own Stream podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed our fantastic interview with Stacey Malkus. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode for links to everything mentioned, including the Young Living Essential Oils and Hello Essentials websites, plus some of the research we referred to, the book that Stacey mentioned, and um, all the other resources too. All of that can be found at ownstream.co backslash Stacey Malkus. That's ownstream.co backslash S-T-A-C-I-E-M-A-L-K-U-S. Also, before we let you go, please sign up for our weekly tip-off email at ownstream.co and just click the sign-up button in the upper right-hand corner. This is where we share each Monday three cool things we've learned in the last week in the areas of lifestyle, business, and spirit. This could be an amazing quote, individual, tip, or tool designed to bring you more freedom and power in your life. So definitely sign up for that again at ownstream.co and just click sign up. Finally, please find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash ownstream. Be the first to know about new podcast episodes, new blog content, and cool stuff related to our personal journey. Also, we're on Twitter at ownstream and on Instagram where we post regularly at own underscore stream. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the OwnStream podcast. To learn more and connect with us, please visit ownstream.co or follow us on Twitter at ownstream and Instagram at own underscore stream.